Hi everybody, this is Dino Chris from, from Prehistoric Facts, and this is a special episode. Uh, we'll actually be do doing two uh, special episodes uh, today, so we'll actually get uh, the first one going and go alphabetical order by these types of dinosaurs. And the first one I'll be talking about is Appalachiosaurus. And of course, Appalachiosaurus in Greek or Latin uh, means Appalachia lizard. Is it's basically named after the Appalachian Mountains. Uh, fossils have been found uh, mostly in the, in the southern United, the su southeastern United States, mostly like in places like in Alabama, uh, Georgia, uh, some places like that, because there's fossil evidence to support that they actually might have actually lived in Georgia. Uh, there's some teeth that have been found there, and uh, Lake Cretaceous about 75 million years ago. About well, 25 feet long and probably would have weighed around two tons. And of course, it's a carnivore, and it's an Epilegiosaurus is kind of well known for being a tyrannosaur. So it is a tyrannosaur. Um, it is actually kind of closely related to uh, Albertosaurus, but this is actually more of a primitive tyrannosaur. So this is actually uh, a tyrannosaur uh, that probably doesn't actually have uh, the sophisticated us. Uh, the sophistication, uh, like say, like with the Albertosaurus, the Spilosaurus, Tarbosaurus, and uh, Tyrannosaurus rex, but even though they the, these dinosaurs are actually would still have a very strong bite force, they would have probably still had great vision, great sense of smell, good sense of hearing, and probably would have actually had a good sen good uh, good good sized brain. Now, Appalachiosaurus would actually be a very fast, uh, per very fast Tyrannosaur. Now we won't we really don't know uh, that much about Appalachiosaurus because there's not, not that many specimens have been found. Uh, but once we actually take into consideration that the teeth are very kind of almost conical shape, so then that means that their teeth are very strong, but they're not as large as like some of the other Tyrannosaurus like Albertosaurus, Displitosaurus, and Tyrannosaurus rex. Because these dinosaurs would actually probably be uh, using a little bit more bite for a little bit more force to actually try to get to the bone. It's because these animals were actually preying on probably probably more like Hadrosaurus, so it would actually be feeding on Hadrosaurus a little bit more. Now the strangest thing about this dinosaur, it's found in the eastern part of the United States. And uh, when we actually look at the eastern United States, there's not that many dinosaurs that actually have been found there in terms of the Cretaceous. Uh, all you have is uh, Hadrosaurus, and that was almost about it. But there is other dinosaurs that have been found in the eastern part of the United States. And so these, so these are very rare types of fossils in terms of the in terms of dinosaurs found in the eastern part of the United States, just east of the Mississippi River. Now, so, Appalachiosaurus probably did, maybe did actually hunt in small packs, so probably they did actually live in probably like maybe groups of probably maybe two to four, probably a small family pack, because once you're kind of at that kind of size, you really don't need to actually be very large in terms of numbers, because otherwise you're actually going to have a huge problem in terms of population, because then everybody's going to start competing against each other. And of course, uh, extinction of Appalachian sources that it couldn't actually adapt to the new ty types of changes to the environment. So it would actually have a little bit of a harder time trying to adjust to the different kinds of changes uh, in the environment. So it would actually uh, would actually not actually uh, do a very good do very good and uh, and probably say like uh, uh, air, probably like a very hot hot uh, types of environments, but even though it could actually still actually uh, do very well in, in certain uh, in certain in a certain environment, but it couldn't actually do all that kind of stuff. All right, the next dinosaur we're actually going to be talking about is Dinochirus. Now everybody actually knows about this dinosaur, but even though we'll actually kind of get right to it, I can't remember the me the name the uh, meaning of the name, but um, uh, the fossils have been found in Asia, mostly in Mongolia and China. Uh, and uh, right now, I guess the average length, uh, the the average length, if I remember correctly, of a of an adult would probably be close to 30 feet long, if I remember correctly, and it probably would have actually weighed probably uh, almost five tons, and so it would, and, uh, and it's a herbivore, 
And uh, the funny thing about Dinocryos is actually is that uh, the fossils the fossils that were actually first found were actually its arms. And so everybody actually kind of tried to guess what these arms actually belong to in terms of a dinosaur. These arms were really long and probably would have actually been actually used used for like uh, like for grabbing. And at first, everybody thought that this was actually a giant theropod dinosaur, probably more like kind of like a meat-eating dinosaur. Probably meat-eating dinosaur, probably pro would have been probably more kind of like, kind of like what Allosaurus was, but actually be a little bit larger. Uh, some some actually thought it might have been an ornithomimid, where it actually, a giant ornithomimid probably would have been the largest ornithomimid of all time. But there wasn't an other fossils that were actually found around that time to actually give a description of what this dinosaur probably looked like. But it wasn't until a few years ago is where we was where paleontologists in I uh, believe in Mongolia uh, they actually have found the actual skeleton of of a dinochirus. Not not fully complete, but probably fairly complete. Uh, they actually found a skull, some vertebrae, and even some of the arm bones that actually are very, very, uh, very similar to the original fossils. And so these were actually, uh, this was actually a huge discovery because nobody even knew what to make of this type of dinosaur. And so now they actually realized that this dinosaur had a very flattened like snout and it actually kind of had a long neck but even though it was actually kind of a medium-sized neck and uh it actually kind of actually has like a like kind of like a little hump on its back and so this is actually a very very interesting type of dinosaur very bizarre and so what they actually believe is that this dinosaur is probably feeding on soft uh grass probably like soft like um ferns or otherwise uh weed like uh uh plants that would actually have been found in swamps and so this dinosaur probably been living in some of the swampy areas of uh, mongolia and china and so this dinosaur is actually very interesting in terms of that it does actually have uh back teeth so it actually would be more used for chewing so it's a chewing uh type of uh, behavior for a dinosaur a lot of scientists are actually think some scientists thought this was actually a bizarre form of hadrosaur but it's not it's actually more closely related to uh over raptorids and so this would actually have been a very bizarre uh type of dinosaur like that but also it's kind of a closely related animal towards the therizinosaurs but even though it's not technically a therizinosaur uh so it's actually kind of almost a therizinosaur but doesn't really have uh the similarities to actually go along with that. Uh, some people would say it is a therizinosaur, but even though the more uh, the more evidence is actually suggesting it's actually more closely related to like oviraptorids, like Gigantoraptor, you know, all those sorts of uh, oviraptorids. And of course, uh, these arms were probably good for self-defense as well, because uh, considering that if there was a predator, kind of like say like uh, Tarbosaurus, Tarbosaurus would actually have been a very uh, compatible predator to actually take on Dinochirus, uh, but I think very rarely would tar Tarbosaurus actually go after a, a Dinochirus, unless if the unless if they were younglings, probably probably like say, uh, probably younglings probably that were actually the size, probably like say a horse, and so those would actually be uh, the types of uh, uh, juveniles that Tarbosaurus would actually be going after, but Dinochirus would actually, but adults would actually use those claws for self-defense, so it could have given a whack at the face of a Tarbosaurus and actually kind of discourage it. Wouldn't actually kill uh, a dino. Wouldn't actually kill uh, the Tarbosaurus. It would actually just probably give a good, good uh, scrape or good inflicting wound right on the face, and actually would have actually discouraged it and probably would have made the Tarbosaurus walk away. And understand that this is this is not a pushover, and so, but uh, but Dino cars would have been very would have been relatively slow, so it would have not have been a very fast uh, animal at all. So it would actually be relying more on its size uh, as its weapon, and also probably the area where it lived 
would have actually been a really good defense because considering that it lived in a swamp so predators wouldn't actually go near uh, uh wet very wet areas very much unless if they actually are desperate to actually get to get to a certain food source but but even though there are predators that actually try to get into the swamps to actually capture their prey you know because sometimes sometimes you actually because you see jaguars will actually uh, get into like a swampy area of the Amazon and actually uh, go after prey that is actually uh, designed to capture. And so that would actually be the more likely scenario for Dinocarus to be threatened by predators. But on occasion, I would actually say that pred some predators would actually be able to have that, that opportunity. But the extinction of Dinocarus would actually have been uh, a very, would have been more likely climate changes once the swamps have dried out. Uh, there was no possible chance for Dinocarus to actually survive. And so that would actually be more likely the extinction of, of Dinocarus. Climate changes are always actually going to be a problem in terms of extinctions. All right, that's it for now. I'm gonna actually going to be doing this next episode. We'll actually be talking about Dromaeosaurus and Goyocephaly. And so we'll actually talk about those two other types of dinosaurs uh, after this episode. So be prepared for that, and, uh, I'll, and I'll do my um, normal um, uh, end uh, in, this in this next episode. So I'll see you in a little bit.